In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make uh, some panel sprite buttons in GDevelop. So I have a folder here on my desktop, and I have some buttons that I made last December, soon after I'd started using GDevelop. Um, I have some oblong buttons here, and then in this one, I have some round buttons. And these are actually the same button as these oblong ones. The only difference is these round ones haven't been stretched out. So I'd originally made these buttons thinking I was going to share them with um, the GDevelop community. But back then they didn't have an easy way to make panel, sp panel sprite objects uh, for buttons. So. I didn't think anyone would want to use them, so I ended up changing the round buttons and making some oblong buttons so that people wouldn't have to fool with how you made panel sprites back then. Uh, so let's open up GDevelop and I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> and this is just the Inkscape where I originally made the buttons. So if we open GDevelop, and we go ahead and make a project and I'm going to call this tutorial and we're just going to save it on my desktop and I'll make a folder called tutorial so it used to be if you wanted to make a panel sprite button the only way you could do it was create a new object and go to the asset store and then you would search for button 9 and it would pull up these uh, at the time there was only a couple of them this style right here it would pull up this thing and you can add it to your scene and once it was added to your scene you could open it and you could come in here and you could change these images with the ones you wanted and then you would also change these properties to fit your image. So that used to be the only way you were able to do panel sprite buttons. And I didn't figure anyone would want to go through the hassle of that. So I kind of scrapped the idea. Um, initially I had just made the, the oblong buttons too. And I was just going to release both of those. Um, the oblong and the round but because they have three different states they have a default a hover and a press um there just wasn't an easy way to release that i didn't think or know about that would keep them all together for when people were looking in the asset store to to find the matching ones so i ended up scrapping the idea but um recently in one of the updates in gdevelop they have added a new object and I'll show you here if we come into new objects from scratch and we go down here we're gonna see user interface and they've actually added the panel sprite button object so if we click the panel sprite button object it's gonna show you some pre-made ones um, let me do that again so you can see new object from scratch panel sprite button these are all the pre-made ones right here but we're just going to hit skip and create from scratch. Okay, and it's going to bring up this screen right here. And you see we have an idle, a hovered, and a pressed um, spot where we could put different animations. And then it's got, right here it's got what's called a label, which is going to be a text box. So now it's actually super easy to make your own panel sprite buttons. So I'm just going to show you how. First, we're just going to choose my file. And I'm in the panel sprite button file. Now, real quick though, let me go to my button file. And I'm just going to point out, since we have this panel sprite thing, we do not need these oblong buttons at all. Because these oblong buttons are the same as this round button. The only reason I split them up and also made some oblong ones is because back then it was harder for people to make panel sprite buttons and I didn't figure anyone would want to go through that so I just made some pre-made buttons but if you want an oblong button instead of using that to make your panel sprite 
we're just going to use the round button because it's the same button and you'll see what I mean in a minute so we'll we'll just um we'll pick our favorite color I'm going to go with the jet round button and we're going to open that up and I'm choosing the default um PNG and on our top margin for this image it is 56 right here and then on our bottom margin for this image it's 68 our left margin is 56 our right margin is 56 and now this uh, width and height that's the default width and height of the of the image so the default width and height is 128 by 140 okay so we now have our idle animation set up for our button so now we're going to come to our hovered animation and we're going to choose our next file and see here's um, the default and here's hover so we're going to choose that and open that up and go ahead and import it into our project and now on this it's the exact same settings as this so our top margin is going to be 56 our bottom margin is 68 left margin 56 right margin 56 and the default height and width is going to be uh, 128 by 140 okay so there's our hovered animation and our idled animation so the last one we're going to set up is pressed so we're going to go back to our folder and we're going to find the pressed one right here we're going to open that up import it into our project and now this is the exact opposite of these as far as the top and bottom margin where these two the top margin is 56 and the bottom is 68 this one you want to do the top margin is 68 and the bottom margin is 56 the side margins do not change they're still 56 56 and the width and height don't change it's still 128 by 140 so we can hit apply um, and we'll just drag it out onto the scene and we'll see what it looks like so far so so far there's our button this little black blur you're seeing is our text let me go change our text to white so you can see it better we'll go to our label in here and we'll hit this color option and I'm just gonna set that to white and apply and I'll show you how to fix that in a second so now when we preview we can see it did not set it to white is what we see oh and apply okay now in our preview we can see that this uh, button has a default when you hover it changes color and when you press it it goes down Okay, so um, that's pretty much it for the button. For the text, we can change it to whatever we want. We can even leave it blank. I'm going to put X, and then I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to put Center and Bold. So we'll see what that looks like. So now we see we have an X centered in there. And another thing we're going to do is up here where it says... Um, Label offset, we can do 10 or 14. I'm going to do 14. So now when we press, the X goes up and down with the button. We can also change it um, to, let's see, change the font size. We'll try 40. Makes a bigger X. So now, now that you have a panel button, you can drag it out, and now you can make your oblong buttons. So that's why I was saying you didn't need those oblong buttons. Those were just uh, back when it was more of a hassle for people to do their own panel buttons, and I didn't feel like giving a bunch of assets where I then had to explain, okay, go, in, go into uh, the asset store, download those buttons, and switch them out. Um... So you can see, you can resize this within reason. See, when you start getting all weird, 
So the default, the default size is 128 by 140. However, come over here to your sidebar where the custom size is. I have noticed these buttons don't do too bad if you put them at 128, 128 to give a more rounded look. They don't look too bad. Maybe a little bit distorted when you press it down, but not much. And so now, um, another tip I'm going to give you, if you're making a mobile game, like most of the projects I work on are for mo mobile games. So there's no such thing as hovered, really, in a mobile game. You're either, it's either not pressed or it's pressed. So if we're doing a mobile game, we could leave this um, hovered animation out and we can replace it by going into our project file um, where's tutorial I have no idea we could replace it by going into our project file and actually choosing the same button as our default um, that was already uploaded into our project file and that way you wouldn't be importing another image into your game that was just going to take up space and that was extremely useless so that's one thing with that if you're plan on making mobile games instead of uh, desktop that might be something you do instead of um instead of importing both the default and the hover just put import the default into your project then go into your project file and select that same image for the hovered and then the only different one you would have would be the pressed so another um another quick tip if you wanted more of these buttons, say I want to keep um, three sizes of this button. I want a round one, and then say I also want a oblong one, and then a longer one. So what I would do, I would just come over here to new button, and I would just duplicate it. And now I have new button two. And so now I could go into new button two. I can, I mean, it's all set up for me. The images are the same. Um, the text is the same but the great thing here is that you can change the text so now I could put start in this text um, and go ahead and apply that and now I could drag out new button 2 and it's gonna say start on it and I can line it up by the um, new button let's see they're both at 90 Y okay so now when I play I have two different button objects my this button object and this button object and now to match this one, I had changed this one's height to 128. So I'm just going to change this one to 128 too. And like I said, the default is 128 by 140, but I found that the height could also be 128 without really messing the button up. And so now if we wanted another one, we could just hit duplicate again. We'll have our new button 2-2. Two, two. And say this one we want to say um, save your game okay that'll be our text there and we can drag this out I'm going to change the height to 128 and I'm going to change the Y to 90 to match the other two and then I'm just going to make it even longer Okay, so then you can see you have three different buttons, three different sizes. Um, if you wanted to do that, this one's too big. Let me change it to 128. There we go. Okay, so that is just a really quick way to make panel buttons. Um, and I'm in the process of putting this up on my itch.io page. I just wanted to do the video real quick so I could put a link in there. Now, if you go to my itch.io page to download these, there will be a screen that pops up and says, suggest a donation, $2. You do not have to donate anything. Just hit, uh, just hit download anyway, I believe, and it will just download it without you having to pay anything. I just leave that up there on the off chance that someone will tip me $2. But it's completely unnecessary, 
and I won't get hurt feelings um, if you just want to use it without donating because there's not a lot of buttons here anyway let me see so it's probably not even you know I mean for two dollars you should probably get a lot more because really the only buttons you'll be using are these round ones um, since I've showed you how to go into G develop and make your panel sprite button with these settings and then you can turn it into any shape you want within um, the certain limitation like I said I think the lowest you can go is 128 by 128 I think anything lower than that would just start breaking up like this let's go preview that and you can see how that's just a broken button all right anyway I hope this has been helpful and hope uh, you use my buttons if you do use my buttons I'm gonna say they're free to use in your game and that if you're using gdevelop you don't have to mention my name um, by using these buttons any other game engine though I'm gonna say go ahead and use my name because um well you know I'm just playing favorites with the game engine of choice so hope you enjoyed this 